Hi, I'm John and welcome to my tropical backyard oasis. Over the past five years, I've transformed this boring, dry, gravelly space into a luscious, colourful garden. So come along as I take you on a tour. I'm telling you that there ain't no other way. Pack your bags and then you will go away. I'm not gonna be begging you to stay. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you asked me yesterday, I would handle this differently. Things are different, I'm a new one. That's not gonna happen. Basically my garden consists of four elements, the pool area, the cabana, this bar and obviously the gardens and the paths. Let's head on down to the pool where everything began. This pool area was completed in about 2000 and it basically just consisted of a concrete pool with a few palms around it. But years down the track, probably in about 2016 to 2018, we really started to build up the gardens around here and built this lovely deck. And this lovely ironbark deck is north facing, so it's fantastic to capture some nice sun throughout the day. The lagoon style pool is built around this man made rock in the centre with a waterfall coming off it. It's covered in mon a monstera and some golden cane palms, and it has a beautiful spot to jump off into the centre of the pool. It's about 3 metres deep or about 9 feet, so fantastic to do some dives or some bombs off. Moving on up is this lovely cabana. So here you have a great view of the pool and a true sense of tropical relaxation is realized. So above you can see we've got a lovely fan, a nice sitting area, dining area, and a little kitchenette. And then right behind sits a fire pit area centered around this big cast iron fire pit with frangipanis and sandstone walls. And it's just fantastic. So this area was completed in about more like 2016, 2017. But again, in the more recent past few years, the gardens here have really come on and I've put a lot of work into um, the planting and colours and the flowers and everything. And as you can see, it's really turned into quite a tropical paradise. To access the cabana from the house, there's a couple of different pathways with sandstone pavers and they weave through the garden and they meet at the centre place with a fountain and a big French penny overhead. Now this junction allows you to cross the creek over a wooden bridge to either go to the fire pit or into the cabana. So it's quite a bit of a resort style feel of different paths, all surrounded by luscious gardens and grassy areas. And then you look forward from the cabana, from the cabana down to the pool. I really try to create a space, you can have a few separate spaces for different functions. So I've got a little bar area, a little bench and it's got a fridge and a sink in there. Um, and of many parties I've used it as a cocktail bar. Or oh, this cabana area is a lovely just relaxing area to have lunch or dinner. And then again you can look down to the pool. Um, and again it's only a few stairs down to that really nice pool. There's also nice open grassy spaces in the sun or in shaded areas surrounded by the gardens to keep cool on hot summer days like today. A large part of my garden design is that I really like to have edible fruits and plants throughout the garden. 
So you might be able to see, but there's lots of banana trees, I've got pineapple plants, blueberries, a lot of citrus trees, mangoes. I've got this really nice guava back here, hiding around the back of the garden. And all of this, I just love to create a nice garden, but also be able to get something out of it. So I have all over the property hidden in fruit trees and all sorts of things. I also really want to expand this and get even more fruit trees and, and get more into veggies. I've got a few little veggie gardens, but not to the extent of the fruit trees and not to the extent that I'd like. Aside from the fruiting trees, I really got into gardening, I'd say, in about oh, when I was probably in year seven and I eight at school, so quite a while ago now. Um, I really liked French pennies. I liked their structural form and the different coloured flowers and I really got into propagating them and back in back in the day I remember going around to um, on in Australia we have, webs we have a website called Gumtree and for free or for a cheap price people would throw out big branches of French pennies and I'd go around collecting them and now I couldn't even tell you how many I have but it would be in the hundreds um, and I propagated them through seeds through cuttings and I've just got a variety of colours everywhere and from there too I really like heliconias and gingers I've got everywhere. I love the um, Heliconia rostrata, I think you pronounce it. It's like a parrot's beak. It's got these really nice red and yellow flowers that hang right up off the branches and they're all through the garden, which I really, really like. And also just the gingers, the spiral red gingers, the spiral red gingers. And I've got this really nice orange beehive ginger, which is the first year finally that it's flowering. And I've been so excited. The garden's also quite defined by large clumping bamboos and we've got a few different types. We've got a really nice Buddha's belly which has got some nice dark thick clums coming up right now. So I've recently completed my bachelor course in architecture and I love design and I love building and I've always had a special kind of passion with gardens and the landscape architecture. I really like landscape architecture in that it's ever evolving. As plants grow you need to either move things, cut things, um, add new plants and you always need to consider um, I mean, I'll, I'll pop a few photos in of how this garden used to look, say, go back three, two or three years ago. Everything starts off basically the same size and you have to consider that over time things, some things will grow tall, some things will grow a bit, some things will only be ground covers and you really need to have that foresight into actually understanding how things will end up growing and I, I really enjoy that and the ever, as I said, ever, ever evolving process. This space always gives me great resort vibes. I've got a bar right here with a fridge, a sink, a mini kitchenette. Behind me I've got the pool down here, the cabana, fire pit, and the house has a sofa here. And I always feel like I could be anywhere in the resort and all I have to decide next is if I'm gonna to go to the pool, over the cabana, and what I'm gonna to have to drink. So this space has very quickly become one of my favorite afternoon places to have a drink, overlook the pool, have a look over the property, and it's just lovely. I've been very lucky to travel to many really nice resorts all over Australia, all over the world growing up and I feel like I've really taken so much inspiration from travelling and I really do have a love for travelling um, and putting it into this garden and bringing things back, ideas that I like and really implementing them into all the different spaces and even though I do see there's areas here that are very much in a way, one might view them as finished or completed but I still see it's an ever evolving um, project in place and there's always things to do but there's a lot of space on my property that I have a lot of ideas and a lot of things that I want to do um, to it so I think as time goes by I know expand this resort feeling area throughout the property and create a lot of really nice spaces um, which I can enjoy and my friends can enjoy and family so anyway thank you so much for watching um, I hope you guys really enjoy this video and a bit of a tour around my tropical backyard um, yeah if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and I'll be posting some more content like this soon